Hi there, welcome to day three. We're on the second part of celebrating today. And yesterday I had this little uh, Christmas ornament that says celebrate on it. And that's a good reminder for us, I think, to celebrate every day. I'm a big believer in that every day is a gift from God. I'm very, very grateful for that. And so in that sense, I don't need a reminder. Um, but sometimes there are those days that uh, you know, we we may be a little worse for wear and we just say, yes, you know, we have very much to be grateful for and we can celebrate. Yesterday, I mentioned to the uh, book Celebration of Discipline by Richard Foster. And I finished off yesterday with a quote from that and I'm going to start with it now. And I'm just reading a few excerpts from this chapter of Discipline of Celebration. He says much in it, so I'm just going to so to touch on a few things, mostly his comments. Celebration is at the heart of the way of Christ. He entered the world on a high note of jubilation. I bring you good news of great joy, cried the angel, which shall come to all the people. Luke 2 and 10. And he left the world, bequeathing his joy to the disciples. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. John 15 and 11. He also mentions how uh, when Jesus started his public ministry, he proclaimed the year of Jubilee. So in, in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. And the social implications of such a com concept excuse me, are profound. In the Old Testament, all the social stipulations of the year of Jubilee Cancelling all debts, releasing slaves, planting no crops, returning property to the original owner, were a celebration of the gracious provision of God. God could be trusted to provide what was needed. He had declared, I will command my blessing upon you, Leviticus 25 and 21. Freedom from anxiety and care forms the basis for celebration. Because we know he cares for us, we can cast our care upon him. God has turned our mourning into dancing. He says, celebration brings joy into life and joy makes us strong. Scripture tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Nehemiah 8 and 10. Celebration is central to all the spiritual disciplines. Without a joyful spirit of festivity, the disciplines become dull, death-breathing tools in the hands of modern Pharisees. Every discipline should be characterized by carefree gaiety and a sense of thanksgiving. Joy is part of the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5 and 22. And he says, often I am inclined to think that joy is the motor, the thing that keeps everything else going. Without joyous celebration to infuse the other disciplines, we sooner or later will abandon them. Joy produces energy, and joy makes us strong. He says much. There's a, a whole chapter, or a whole um, number of paragraphs on the path to joy, um, the spirit of carefree celebration. I'll read a little bit of that. The Apostle Paul calls, calls us to rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, Philippians 4 and 4. But how are we to do that, Paul continues. Have no anxiety about anything, or as the King James puts it, be careful for nothing. That's the negative side of rejoicing. The positive side is, in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the result, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. He says a bit later on, the spirit of celebration will not be in us until we have learned to be careful for nothing. And we will never have a carefree indifference to things until we trust God. That is why the Jubilee was such a crucial celebration in the Old Testament. No one would dare celebrate the Jubilee unless they had a deep trust in God's ability to provide for their needs. Prayer is the means by which we move the arm of God. Hence, we can live in a spirit of carefree celebration. 
He continues on with some more great words through there. Um, and then the next uh, sub paragraphs and, and, and subtitle to that is um, the benefits of celebration. And it, it's good. He says, far and away, the most important benefit of celebration is that it saves us from taking ourselves too seriously. This is a desperately needed grace for all those who are earnest about spiritual disciplines. It's an occupational hazard of devout folk to become stuffy bores. This should not be. Of all people, we should be the most free, alive, and interesting. Celebration adds a note of gaiety, festivity, and hilarity to our lives. After all, Jesus rejoiced so fully in life that he was accused of being a wine-bibber and a glutton. Many of us lead such sour lives that we cannot possibly be accused of such things. Ouch. And he um, continues on. You have to get the book to, to read all of it. Um, and he talks about the um, the practice of celebration and how we can practice and he says it could be through singing dancing shouting um, because of the goodness of God the heart breaks forth into psalms and hymns and spiritual songs worship praise adoration flow from the inner chambers in Psalm 150 we see the celebration of the people of God with trumpet and lute and harp with timbrel and dance with strings and pipe and loud clashing cymbals and he talks about laughing and other ways we practice celebration and the fact that Jesus had a sense of humor and, uh, you know, all, all of these things that, that um, are expressions of, of our joy and our celebration. Another way is uh, using our creative gifts and that of others, um, making family events into times of celebration and Thanksgiving, whether it be birthdays, uh, graduations, um, just sp anything special can be made even more special as we celebrate it together as a family. And whatever your family looks like, whether it's yourself and one other person or yourself and friends that live downstairs or up the street or whatever it might be, it could be within our own family of, of church, um, our church family, the family of God. And he mentions too about, of course, the great celebrations that we can do at Christmas and not the crass uh, commercialism, um, but whatever it is that you do that makes Christmas special for you. We talked a bit about that yesterday as well. And uh, for us, uh, there are many things and, you know, family traditions. And even now when our uh, very much adult kids come home and if they're here at Christmas Eve after church, there, there are a couple of Christmas videos, kids' videos, that uh, that we have to watch because it's tradition. The kids have watched it for years, and uh, we, we all become kids a little bit at Christmas. And so, um, you know, the, and, and we all have our own things, whether it's sending Christmas cards, whether it's an exchange of gifts, listening to Christmas music, attending services. A little different this year, but again, like I said yesterday, there are so many services on TV that we can follow. And so let's make sure at this point uh, in this year to do what we can to celebrate the birth of Christ and to enjoy it and to, to pull out those things that are so important to us within our faith and to just to enjoy it and celebrate and, um, and give thanks to God for this very special time. God bless you.